Welcome to the R&B Only Show. Please note that the opinions expressed here belong solely to the hosts and guests, not to Colors Worldwide Inc., our affiliates, or sponsors. The content is provided as is for entertainment and information purposes only, without any guarantees of accuracy or completeness. Colors Worldwide Inc. is not liable for any errors or omissions, nor does mentioning products or services imply endorsement. This disclaimer is subject to change, and we encourage our audience to stay updated. We got a special <laughs> guest with us today. Alex, the one and only, Isley. Hi. How did we even get here? Why are you doing music? If there are people out there who have never heard of a song by Alex Isley, what would you say are three songs that would be like the perfect intro. Ooh, I would say who are your top three R&B legends? Ooh, top three. Vocally, probably R&B only. So excited. Welcome back to the R&B only show. Yes, I'm your yes. girl, Joe V.E. And I'm Tierra Monique West West. And we got a special, special <laughs> guest with us today. So excited. So excited. Alex, the one and only Isley is joining us and for no. this episode. She just got done singing in the shower. Look out for that episode because, of course, it's going to be a good one. But hello, Miss Isley. And thank Hi. you for joining us. First of all, you look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you Sound for having amazing, me. Sound amazing per usual. Right, so glad you. you're here with us. How are you feeling today? I feel great. I feel great. I, yeah, honestly, I feel a little sore. I started with my personal trainer yesterday. So. Uh -oh. Everything is sore. Get right, but get tight. I, I love it though. I'm excited. You like having a trainer rather than just working out on your yeah, own. Yeah, I like everything is custom for me and what right. I want to do. So mm -hmm. it's love good. That. Yeah, keeps you accountable. Yes, that's good. Yeah. We, we we love a good fitness workout over here. That's yeah. that's great. Yeah, get it together. So I'm that's sore, great. but I'm good. That's you did also yeah. just have a performance at the Hollywood Bowl. What was that? Last night or Saturday? Saturday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How was the, that? The jazz festival. It was amazing. Oh yeah, amazing. the jazz festival was uh -huh. this weekend. I'm, I, I swear, every year I'm like, I'm gonna go next year. Yeah, and then I got something to do. But it was yeah. a nice. It looked like a really nice lineup, and it I know a couple is. people who went every and they had a really year. good time. Everything at the Hollywood Bowl is always good. So, welcome oh. in. We got a whole bunch of questions. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where How to are start you, because T, first. I'm, I'm great. I'm in here with Alex Isley. Like I'm trying to. I'm at a loss for words. I walk in and. You singing, uh, I don't want to give away what she was singing. Not but too much. The not cover much. she was singing, y'all, sound just like the song, if not better. So I'm like, I was just Whoa, amazed, that's heavy, to be, but thank to, you. amazed to be in here in your presence so in here. So I'm, I'm feeling you. good. How are yeah. you feeling, Joey? I'm sensational. I've, honestly, sensational. Um, so I do the booking for like singing in the shower and like mm -hmm. our show. So Joby I've been working. in your DMs <laughs> from that R&B only account <laughs> where we've been trying to get you in. Um, so it's really, really amazing to see here like it really actually came into fruition it wasn't just in the emails you know what i'm saying yeah for sure so glad to have you here i'm glad to be here we off tomorrow you know what i'm saying right it's juneteenth shout yep. out to black happy people. juneteenth shout out to black <laughs> people. Right. Shout, out to black people. shout out to our freedom but uh Lovely. let's we jump right, right into it, into it. I, got, yeah. I got a lot of stuff i want to ask you so yeah. many things i want to know about and like i said our team and just fans and people they're happy to, that you're in here so they have a lot of stuff that they've given us to ask you too so okay let's go back to the, the beginning how did we even get here why are you doing music obviously we know you come from a legendary family of musicians for y'all that don't know this is the donor of the legendary ernie isley from the isley brothers but besides that like tell us about your upbringing in music, your influences, and, and how they shaped your sound? I was just always surrounded by music and um, on both sides of the family. Mm -hmm. And so R&B is my foundation, but then also on my mom's side, my maternal grandmother, she sang opera for right. years. Mm -hmm. And then when she retired, she became a voice teacher. And I was one of her students. She started training me from 12 all the way up until I graduated from college. Um, so, so you're trained classically? Trained classically, yes. Wow. Um, and she really instilled the importance of the technical side and right. knowing the technical side because mm -hmm. I longevity is, is a goal of mine in right. this business. And um, so I want to take care of my voice as best as I can. And, you know, I, I can warm up a little more than I should, um, but um, I'm just really grateful for my grandmother and everything she, you know, planted in me. I can hear it now that you're sitting here talking so softly. Like you, gotta, you gotta preserve that voice because I want you to be using it for the rest of your life too. Okay? Yes, yes. So, uh, but yeah, I've just been always surrounded by music constantly. Yeah. Um, so seeing my dad and uncles perform when I was little it was very much normal. You heard that, dad and uncles, because she's right. related to all of them. That, that, <laughs> they're brothers. That's they're brothers. Yeah, that's she's she's related related like, to all of which them. one are you related to? I'm like, all, all of them. Of they're them. they're right. actually brothers, for real. Real brothers. And they, they got real down, because they used to dress, you know, I've always Not used think to. Of, you see that versus? <laughs> used to. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Not used to. However, Still, comma, to I day. always think of that one picture. There's like this iconic picture of them like posted like way back in the day. And they was like, how many of them you think got knives on them? Like, they like, come on. 
guy. Oh <laughs> you my know gosh. what I'm saying? Like that one. <laughs> what, Anyways, what is that like though? Like, do you feel pressure when your when your family is bo- literally both sides? Do you feel any Crazy. pressure? Like, or, or what drives you even wanting to have a career in music when you see it all from your family? I'm guessing there's no pressure then. Honestly, the pressure is internal because okay. I've more as I've yourself. gotten older, I've come to understand like what their legacy means right. and. Um, so that's all been just for me and what I feel like I want to address in my career. Um, but they've always been so supportive Mm -hmm. and, um, so proud and I'm proud of, of, you know, to be a part of the lineage and, and, you know, always proud of my family. So I will say, you know, when you deal with a lot of like, or not even deal with, when you listen to legendary musicians and they have a a relative, whether it's a, a child, a sibling, a nephew, a niece, a cousin, they don't always have the talent that should be pushed but I can say with like people like you like people I don't some people don't know that you come from the Isley Brothers Mm -hmm. you know and I think that that is a big deal and it just shows like I don't want to be specific in getting names but yeah like you created your own lane it has nothing to do with what your dad and uncles honestly one of my favorite non-problematic or unproblematic Nepo babies you up there with Tracy (laughs) Ellis Ross as far as I'm concerned of unproblematic Nepo babies there's a lot and you like why are are we listening to the why are there music playing on the radio why are they at the BET awards why are they at the Grammys like there's no talent if your daddy wasn't so-and-so your mama wasn't this person you wouldn't be there but I never ever thought that about you I honestly mm-hmm. thought that you just had you just like the they name or something I'm like I oh told maybe you yeah, this is a nice name. last name yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. we sent the uh, like you know one quick one pager in the group chat yesterday and our boss was like oh I didn't know that she was affiliated with the Isley brothers I'm like hello like yeah. <laughs> that just goes to show like it's a testament for your talent and what you're doing like it's it's amazing speaking of yeah. um that talent and what you're doing if there are people out there who have never heard of a song by alex isley what would you say are three songs that would be like the perfect intro to Ooh. you i would say into orbit for sure mm-hmm. um that's one of my older songs but it still gets so much love and great reception so i would say into orbit i would say probably Probably mine mm. um, that I did with Jack Dine, and then yeah, probably um, another one, maybe maybe about him, mm-hmm. either about him or Good and Plenty. Mm-hmm. Um, so either about one. him, either one will work. <laughs> oh, either one will work. Everything on the Essential playlist that's on Apple Music. That's, <laughs> just, go, just go play the oh. entire thing. But while we're on the uh, subject of collaboration, how did that come about with Jack Dine, and how do you how do you pick who you're going to work with, and how does that how do you navigate that? Because I know it's it's difficult to work with a lot of artists and everybody doesn't think the same way. And before that, I know you were producing a lot of your own stuff on your own, right? Yeah, yeah. I had, honestly, I had produced everything with the exception of, um, I have a song, Road to You, which uh, was produced by the genius D. Mile. But yeah. um, I am a firm believer in God's timing and placement. And for me, I, as far as who I work with and, and the spaces that I'm in, mm-hmm. I'm just, I feel like I'm just, I'm led by God to be where I'm supposed to be. But as far as Jack, I was slightly familiar with his name a few years ago and and I recognized the names of the artists he worked with and I liked those artists. So I met him 2019, like May 2019. And I was just like, well, let's just see what happens. And we liked that first session. And then we had like a standing weekly session. And then he was like, we should put out a project. We should do like a joint Praise thing. God, I was like, did. okay. So then that we did Wilton. Um, we dropped that in November, 2019. And then followed up, followed up with Marigold in the middle of the pandemic and everything else. Um, so wow. yeah, wow. Uh, it's such a great creative partner. He is one of one. Yeah. And, and let's not forget about uh, Terrence. Mm-hmm. Terrence Martin. Terrence Martin. Another great collab. That's, yes. I left my heart in Ladera. And that's why I was like, I don't think that she claims New Jersey. I'm like, <laughs> I've heard too many songs. I'm like, she talking about Labrea. I'm about to turn on Crenshaw. I'm like, yeah. ain't no way. You be talking about some New Jersey streets if that Listen, was, that's what you claim. I wish I was more familiar with Jersey. I We moved out here when I was two mm-hmm. and my mom is born and raised LA. So this is all I know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm an Real honorary West LA West. native. Shout out to the Real West Coast. West West. Yeah. Yeah. I love that project though. My cousin plays it nonstop. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's great. How did that come about, though? You just you and Terrace Martin. Terrace and I, let's see, Terrace and I, going back to when we met, 
we met at a jam session, I think, uh, like 2012. He was like, I want to work together. Let's do some music. And we just kept saying that for a few years. Mm -hmm. We need to do something. We need to do something. And then just everything finally aligned. I think 2018, Mm -hmm. we started crafting the music for that album. And then as we were getting into our flow and we had a few joints down, the pandemic happened and then the shutdown. So we had to take a pause on that. But uh, Terrace is such a legendary, legendary West Coast Mm -hmm. uh, but he's but he's global. He's a mentor. He's like a big brother figure to me. Um, he's always so supportive of me and my art, and just always drops gems and always encourages me. And so, yeah, Terrace, uh, he's you know he's he's special. You could tell. You could hear it in the in the music, the relationship that y'all. Yeah, have. it's, it's it sounds great. Thank you. But it's uh, really grounding. And yeah, like, I don't know. It like carries. And it feels good. Feels good. Yeah. yeah. It's Thank a. You. I, I need to hurry up and get my uh, sixty four and Paula and put the top down. So I can ride around. Listen, that's that's the type of music <laughs> it is. But while we on uh, the pandemic, though, I know you're independent. So talk about like just staying motivated and keeping yourself working during like a time like the pandemic, and even now when a lot of there's so many you know new lanes for independent artists to go. Just talk about that yeah. and keeping yourself afloat. I you know being independent um, has been great. Mm. But there's, you know, there's going to be challenges with anything. And I think right. um, spearheading everything is great. But then on the other side, you're spearheading everything. And right. so, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. Mm-hmm. Um, but having a support system around me, my mother especially, she is, um, you know, she encouraged me to um, produce my own music. I didn't have that vision for myself. She encouraged me to or taught me about uh, the importance of a PRO and owning your own masters and owning your publishing and all of that. So, um, but, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. No, you could, you but, could. um, also, especially being a mom, yeah. um, during the pandemic, I was reminding myself, like, you know, we don't know what this is or where this is going. Mm-hmm. Just, take care of yourself mm-hmm. so that you can take care of your daughter. Right. So that's what I, that's what I was telling myself. And, and just, I had to just relax in the unknown as much as I could and not force myself to be productive and be like, you know, it's okay. We're, we're figuring life out literally. So yeah. you don't have to be working. And good things come from the unknown too. Yeah. Sure. Obviously. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, the singing, the producing, all the things, hands in everything. <clears throat> what would you say is your favorite part about um, the music making process or like making a project or a song? That is my favorite part, the creation. Yeah. It being in the midst of, of crafting everything, that's for me. That's mm-hmm. the part for me. I think the end product, the result, the, the song, the music, that's for whoever listens and connects. Mm-hmm. But my happy place is making it. Use your fulfillment from creating. Yeah, it. that's that's where I'm fulfilled. That's where I'm full. Um, so let's, yeah, let's stay there for a second. Yeah. So okay, so I, like I told you earlier, when I was reading, uh, I want to say an interview that you did with LA Weekly. LA Weekly, mm-hmm. you're talking about how when you hear music, you see colors, and this is called. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. (laughs) Now, y'all, I've been practicing this word for like the last three hours and still didn't get it. Synesthesia. Okay. So in my head, this is like a superpower. But when I'm reading about it, I don't understand how it works. So can you explain that to me and the people that don't know? If you know what it is, let us know in the comments. If you have it, let us know how you use it. But I don't want to say have like it's a condition. I feel like it's just like, you know, they say like only 10% of your brain is open. I feel like yours is probably like 20%. You know what I mean? Like you just see yeah, things know. deeper than us. It's not really a condition. It's like a superpower. But mm. what is it, first of all? It's so, I associate colors with keys and and chords. So, um, so and they're always constant. Like, like C major is always yellow. Okay. But C minor is like, um, almost like a purplish, like a fuchsia. Shout out to Lakers. Where do you, where do you see it? Like, I just in your it just comes I, up. I I see it in my mind, so, so how do I don't you use it. Like what? Wait so wait wait. I'm still mean? I'm still on okay, the how yeah, do you see back, it? I'm back, still on back. the how do you see it? Because when I hear this, does it is it like your brain? Like what? Like what turns the color? Is it like 
as it's coming out of the person's like No, I just it it just evokes it in my head. I just I'm like thinking of, think it. of it. Yeah, I think of the color. And mm. I want to say that when I was looking it up, they said that there's like two different ways to have it and one mm. of them is like a projector and that's when you your body makes you think of it mm-hmm. and the other one is like when you associate something with it. Okay. So maybe you have the projector side. I need to look I had, at my yeah. notes actually. I, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't delved that much into it. I should think of I was just so interested and I'm like, how does this even, yeah. So I want to know how you use that though. So is it like a tool that you use when you're creating your music or is it just something that you see? Definitely. So I use it for like the mood um, because every key is different, which creates a different color and every color is a different mood, you know, um, like something in the key of G major is brighter for me, like right. a, almost like a sky blue. Right. But if I'm thinking about like a, like a flat minor, that's like a, almost like a purple like this, which is like a darker kind of moodier mm-hmm. vibe. And so. And, but also a, like you say a painting. minor is also deeper in sound, right? Yeah. Like, is it scarier sounding? So a deeper color would be. With not, a, not scarier necessarily, but just. The darker colors tone. match with the okay it's darker yeah. tones. That's yeah. like you're painting while you're singing. Like that's I've heard multiple people so say that. Pharrell, Beyonce, and you said the mathematician. I can't. Re- yeah, and I don't remember the name of the mathematician, but I read about him. He associated numbers yeah. with colors, and it's always interesting to see like how it's used as a tool because it's one thing to have this power because that's what it is. Everybody can't do it. And to to see how you use it, that's mm-hmm. that's the part that was interesting to me. I'm like, because I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I'm like, when I see the number nine, I just see the number nine. I wish I could see like the color purple. I didn't know. I didn't know that this was a thing. A thing. I didn't know it had a name to it. But I remember being younger and hearing songs in the key of like C major, and it would always evoke the color yellow in my head. So I remember asking my dad. We heard a song on the radio, and I was trying to remember it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the only way I could describe it was. The yellow song. I was like, what's that yellow song? Wow. And my dad was like, That's what are so you talking wholesome. about? I was like, what's that yellow <laughs> wow. song? <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Not only that. I'm okay. Like, so really she has like... this superpower, but also sings in perfect pitch. Like, come, be so serious. <laughs> just a, just blessed what does, overall. What does perfect pitch, like having perfect we had this pitch conversation really week. mean? I'm not sure if I have the technical definition down, but being able to identify a key or a note without any outside source, like everything is internal, you're able, you're able to determine. So if I sing a note right now, you could tell me what key it's in. Yeah. Can you hear what key somebody talks in? No, I'm not no, that crazy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> not that crazy. Now I'm about to say. So, so, you, could like, so you could like tune the hell out of a guitar. Yeah, like I could Do you tune play in any instruments. I'm learning guitar now, okay. a little bit, so I'm keeping my fingernails short. Okay, right okay, now. okay. Um, I can play some piano. Uh, she could tune can't the hell you out of a guitar. So- <laughs> you know what? And I was gonna, I was wondering, like, if you weren't, let's say, you weren't born into the family you were born into. Mm-hmm. What do you think you'd be doing something outside of music? Like, what do you think you'd be doing outside of music? But like. Now that I like it's, it's I feel like it has nothing to do with the people that yeah God talent, gave you that talent like, and the family around you just helped did you helped it mold did I say help <laughs> <it? laughs> see my sometimes my thoughts it. be moving faster than my tongue it's all good okay. you always talking shit about I, me no no <laughs> anyway, we're going to each other because no, 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 I don't be pronouncing anything say, correctly rerouting my thoughts <laughs> rerouting but uh, no I feel like. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I feel like helped you just you. God just the family gave you helped. a gift, and the the family that you were birthed into on both sides just helped mold the person that you are. Pitch. And I think that's amazing. Like just crazy. Thank wow. you. Wow, I'm Thank really you. just sitting here like speechless right now that's in shock. Nuts. Thank you. That's and I want to talk nuts. about what it's like because now we're talking about you being younger and being raised when both of your sides are so musically inclined. Now your daughter is the same exact way. Oh my gosh. The same way, both sides. I was Grammy week year old when I found out that one, you had a daughter and who her father was. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. (laughs) That little girl is going to be- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm like, yeah, Uh uh-huh. Crazy. How is that? Well, first of all, what is it like being a mother in the music industry? Because I know a lot of times we say, oh, I don't, I can't have kids right now. Or people tell mm-hmm. you not to have kids right now when you're trying to push mm-hmm. your music career. So what's that like, first of all? My particular journey, um, again, I just had a great support system around me and my, and my mother especially. And, it takes a village for sure. Um, 
yeah, and and you know, um, Isley has great parents, and yeah. you know, we work together, and and we essentially do the same thing. So, um, I think for me, just taking it one day at a time, but also planning for the future, and and but then also being as present as I can, because right. I don't want to look up and then she's sixteen and I don't know right of where the time went. Of course, um, but so being in the industry and being a mom. There's more encouragement and support than than you would think, mm-hmm. than you would expect. Um, and there's sort of a camaraderie, especially amongst mothers, amongst uh, parents, but specifically mothers in the industry. Mm-hmm. So um, it's always great to, to have in the field. That's a good thing. And it's motivating, too, because people like me, I'm like, oh, I'm getting older, but I know I want to have kids, but at the same time, I feel like it's going to be difficult. So when I see people like you that are navigating it well, it's like that that's motivating and inspiring to me. Thank you. Women Emphasis. like me. Yeah. Emphasis on well, because you were recently celebrated at a prestigious mm-hmm. mom honors event alongside like Janae Aiko and Jordan Sparks. How was that? I'm sure that had to like fill your bucket. Oh, that was, yeah. Is that the super moms thing that they did? There was like a bunch of people um, around America and they were voting for like super moms in their No, that no, the that's that's something different, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, this was um, honoring a handful of us moms in the entertainment industry. Okay. And my heart was just so full. Everybody talking about, you know, their moms and their children and, and you know, their families. It was just... It was a really, really great event. Love that. That's amazing. It always feels, I'm sure it feels good to be seen, especially like outside of your musical accolades as like the mom that you are. It was great. But also I was thinking about my mom mm-hmm. and how much she has supported me from day one and how much she has sacrificed. Mm-hmm. So um, to recognize her as well mm-hmm. and to recognize my daughter for, you know, she's a teacher as well. <laughs> so I'm learning every day from her. Right. How old is Isley? Oh, you know, she's technically seven, but she's, <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, she's, she's, she's been, going she's on been here, she's been here before, yeah. for sure. Love that. Yeah. Those are always my favorite kind of kids. Even when I was teaching, like the kids who you're like, mm, baby, you done got some years on you. Yeah. Right? It's like, so where, 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 where were you I sent you. from? I where see. were you sent from? That's sweet. Well, while we're here talking, I know you talk about like your support system a lot in uh, your family. Were there any pivotal moments that helped launch your career? Ooh. Um, or one in particular? I don't think so. I think all of it has been, all of it has been uh, crucial. Mm-hmm. There's so many different key moments. I'm thinking about like being in my bedroom and recording my vocals. And I was just talking to my mom about this yesterday. I remember years ago recording my first project and trying to record in the midst of like airplane noises and Mm -hmm. cars driving down the street and just trying to get it quiet enough so I can record my vocals. I thought about, I thought about um, all the different people that I've met along the way and still meeting and and connecting with, with great people. So there's been so many different pivotal moments. It truly is a journey. Yeah, Mm. it really is. Do you think like early on that there was anything I don't know. There has to be like something that you're like, if this moment didn't happen super early on, do you think it would like have thrown off the trajectory of maybe your career or how you go about things now? I think so. Yeah. Um, It just comes back to, I'm a firm believer in God's timing Mm -hmm. and um, just thinking about where I am now and everything happened exactly how it was supposed to. So yeah, yeah, um, I wouldn't change anything. I love that. As it does. Let's talk about R and B then while we while we're here. Hey, what do you think R and B needs right now? If anything. R and B always needs love, mm-hmm. but R and B is so strong, it's it's so present. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like the conversation of or the no the notion of R and B is dead. I hate it, right? R and B has never been dead. Never, ever. And it makes me and upset never too die. when like, like people don't know about people like you. It's like you couldn't if you heard you or uh, Leia, or like Destin Conrad. It's like, how could you t- how could you say that? Y'all yeah. are just not going to look for it, and you're not taking the time out to do your research and find these incredible artists. And I think that maybe that's the thing that it's not so easily accessible, accessible mm-hmm. or found. Yeah, as maybe it might yeah. have been. Yeah, because back in the day, R and B was probably every eight songs on the radio. Mm-hmm. Eight, eight out of ten songs on the radio were R and B songs, and now it's flipped. 
every two songs I'd be R and B in the first eight year rap songs. Yeah, yeah, it's so. not as trendy anymore. Was in the era of streaming and social media and everything, so that we got to dig a little more, but it's mm-hmm. all still there. For sure. And yeah. it's alive and well. Someone that you actually put me on to, and um, I saw you for the first time in D.C. at Howard Theater. and Shout Leia, out H.U. Mm. You know. Um, and Leia was on tour with you. This She was opening. And I think I'd heard maybe one or two, like I'd maybe heard Sailor Moon by her or before. Mm. Or no, I don't this think was before then, this huh? was this yeah. was just before Crazy Down. Like I think Crazy Down was the next. It either had just come out or like was coming out right after the concert. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you choose who goes on tour with you or like who you decide to go on tour with? Is that anything that like you are super intentional about at all? Um, yes. So that was my first tour. Um, that was with Femit Forward. Shout out to them and um, yeah. you know women based and and I wanted to continue to showcase and support you know women around me that I admire and I love Leia I think she's she's so dope she was up there with a mic and some gloves and just like ate the performance yeah so good I'm a fan of her for life like off of that performance alone yeah she's amazing um so I had her on the east coast run um, amazing uh, producer artist Gwen, Gwen Bunn yeah. for the mm-hmm. Southern Cities. Uh, and then on the West Coast, I had Zaya Bell, who is so amazing as well. Yeah, she is. So, yeah, yeah I intentionally picked those three women. Um, again, I love and admire them all and, and, you know, wanted to, you know, give them an opportunity to showcase and do what they do. So, mm. Gwen Bunn has a song. Actually, Femme Forward put out a like, a collab project. Yeah. project. And one of my favorite songs on there is the song with Gwen, Gwen Bunn. Bunn. And mm-hmm. I think there's another song with Ombre. Yeah. Another song with Ombre. And one of them, it's like, I'm going to pull oh, it up that right now. The project is really good. Speaking of projects, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got some new music coming. <laughs> uh, so, oh, I, I, I heard it. I heard it. I heard Sir, it. Wait, somebody somebody sent a message and said, did you find your song? So I can hurry and get um, some new music. Um. Oh, it's well, say grace. If there really is a God, that if. song. It's no like it's it's oh, like that's a, the name of the song. That's the name of I'm the like, song. Well, if yeah. if there really is a God, <laughs> like I always try to look for like my three song run in a project that like oh yeah, they went shit. stupid yeah. on this these three or these five yeah, and like the run runs. from what you, what you deserve. If there really is a God, and at your worst. Oh, had me in a chokehold for so long. Like that project is so good. Yeah, it is. Tierra Whack is on here. Yeah, I the entire her. project. They need so to do another good. one and put you Honestly. on it. But while we're talking about music, though, so new music coming uh, this year, next year, tour. So I can't really get into specifics of anything, okay, unfortunately. You can blink but twice if no, I'm just playing. But <laughs> I have I have been in a space of of writing and creating. Um, that's always good. So that's good whether you release there, it or not. There is, there is, so good. there so is excited. stuff on the way. Okay, then yes, there is stuff on the way. But so I can't, excited. I can't share anything else. I, other than I that. promise I won't ask anything else. Then that was enough. That was enough. I get in. I heard you too this year on uh, Destin Conrad's. What was it? The first same mistake. Was it submissive one or two that you were on? I think it was two. Yeah, I think it was two. You're on same mistake. Yeah, yeah. that's two. So I'm like, I'm not going to push too hard. I heard you oh. this year <laughs> on something. New. And I just heard uh, Left My Heart in the Dara, So, And that wasn't too long ago. Valid. Yeah. Valid. But, um, Valid. Yeah. <laughs> so ex- <laughs> I'm just so excited. I'm just so, 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 so. I want to talk about excited. musical influences and R&B legends now. Other than obviously yo uncle, so we were just and talking dad. about Shaka Khan. Yeah, we've been mm-hmm. we've been in here going in with Shaka Khan ever since he dropped the tiny desk. But so who are your who are your top three R and B <clears throat> legends? Ooh, top three, um, vocally probably Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. uh, Stevie. Okay. And it's a solid two. Gonna be the third. I don't know because I don't know whether to like choose like overall or more for, for you mm. somebody three people that have influenced your style of music and your creation um i know I, stevie's on the list stevie i mean it's technically vocally i have to say mariah because mm-hmm. that was really one of the first voices that i really like studied mm-hmm. and listened to there's so many other like 
vocally, there's so many people, Faith Evans, yeah. um, SWV, Brandy, Tamia, like yeah. D'Angelo. There's, there's so many people. The back is deep. Mm. You have inspirations outside of music, literature, films, anything you pull in from? I do. Um, I love Coco Chanel. I love Audrey Hepburn. Um, I love Angela Bassett. I love um, Angela Bassett, too. Yeah, iconic. I, I never really think about that. Well, iconic, yeah. You're right. Let me add that to my mood. <laughs> Angela Bassett. Your mood board. Yeah. No, for real, because that's on my gym mood board. Her mm. arms, I'm so tired of this. Oh, my gosh. Like, She's in such special. amazing shape. Oh, it's insane. Been, right? Yeah. I heard she only eats, like, raw vegetables. I was and just that's, about to say, that's, that's mostly it. diet. Yeah. You know, we all got abs and muscles and stuff, but if you eat like a rabbit all day... Be cut up. Yeah, you really gotta hungry. literally eat like a rabbit. Ugh. Like she's yeah. so clean. Yeah, I'm I trying. Know. I'm getting there. I'm working you on it. You could though. You know, if it only takes 21 days to make a habit out of something. So once you right. get everything out of your body, and now they got all these uh, detox, and they got these herbs and stuff that help you not have cravings. Because mm. I've done it before, but as soon as I get done with the detox, I'll be like, "We're in and out at. Let me right. get a burp. <laughs> Number two. Speaking of in and out, I <laughs> used to hate, and you know what. I used to hate on in You're and out. You're talking to two California natives right I now. I know. I hear you. But I'm saying this live. I now know that you just have to perfect your order. I feel like the, like the menu you doesn't- You got to get it how you yeah, like it. Customize yeah, customize it. Yeah. But the menu doesn't look like it's like customizable. Like you, It's mm-hmm. like a if you know, you know kind of thing. Yeah, and that, now that I is know. true. Because yeah. people are like, this all y'all got? Three options of the <laughs> same thing. Yeah, you got to know what to ask for. And then now, there's a secret menu too. Which now show I know what order? to ask for. Um, typically, a number, the, number two is a cheeseburger, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll do that. And then I'll do animal style fries. I've never had my fries animal style. Oh, Me God. neither. I've never even tasted them like that. Oh, they're so good. Really? That's but just I learned the about cheese them and them. grilled onions, right? And, and the, 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 the sauce, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what See, do you like now, now, now I know I'm getting a number two. I'm getting extra grilled onions, and I'm getting the uh, like chili peppers. The peppers on That's the side. Oh, on the side. Peppers. I'm getting it. I didn't know. Oh, you can put it on your burger. Okay, so next time I'm putting it on the damn chop burger. The chilies. Yeah, chop the chilies. Yeah. Put that bitch in the burger. The fries, <laughs> and the I'm burger. either getting a. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm cracking up. Put that bitch in the burger. <laughs> oh. um, and I'm either getting a Dr. Pepper or I also didn't know that you can get the milkshakes mixed. I yeah. like that. Chocolate and strawberry. You can also get I'm what getting they, vanilla strawberry, but go off. You can also get what they call uh, the uh, lemon up, which is pink seven lemonade. up and pink lemonade. Okay, that's you just cute. tell them a lemon up and they yeah. mix it. They already know. See, what's it's up. like that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't, it, I didn't know that this was a if you know you know kind of thing. Yeah. But now that I know, like now I'm with it. And okay, it's cheap. And since we here, shoot, yeah. give me two other <laughs> LA spots you just have to eat at. Like if you've been gone mm-hmm. for a month, two months, you've been in, I don't know where was somewhere I didn't have good food, Portugal. Mm-hmm. And you come back. Now, how Portugal does this great like I'm just like, where did I go that ain't got no good food? Portugal actually Europe. really does a good no, food. No, the food was good, but the fries didn't have enough salt. Oh. No, the food was good. Okay. Though. I came from, but usually I go Amer- to like these got Jamaica. Americans. I'll be going to <laughs> Ghana. The food be different when I go to the places like that. So, yeah. Portugal, that was the. Okay. Okay. Let me say something worse. The UK. Oh, and then you come <laughs> home. Don't do the UK like this. <laughs> God you have damn. beans. They, they do be having Baked beans, beans on Wonder for Bread. Breakfast. No, yeah. but just anyway, forget it. If you go somewhere, travel, and you come home, you got to have two LA places to eat. Where are they going to be? Let me pull First my notes up. First is Simply Wholesome. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's typically like when I land, that's like the first place I go. You get a meal or you just grab a patty and a smoothie? I typically get the salmon burrito Ooh. and the tonic. Um, which is the pineapple, um, the pineapple juice with the uh, ginger. Uh-huh. Mm. So I'll do that typically. Yeah, everyone ain't got shit on their smoothies. <laughs> so much sugar in them smoothies. <laughs> you know what? Saying. I've never had a simply wholesome smoothie. They're okay. delicious, but that's because they be putting that damn. You be sitting them scooping the ice cream out the back in the damn blender. You be like, damn, how many scoops I'm oh. like, That's ice cream. <laughs> okay, so simply wholesome. Yeah, and where else? Oh, uh, well, since we over that way, probably Mike's Deli. Oh, uh, Mike's Deli hitters. is another one. Yeah. Slauson. Is yeah. that like a sandwich spot? Yeah. yeah. It's Mike's been, the, sandwich the, spot. the sandwich spot, the sandwich in my spot. opinion. Yeah. Your sandwich is going to be this thick. And you said it's called what now? Mike's, Mike's Deli. Deli. It's right off Slauson and Fairfax. 
You know, they y'all know sell. I just moved here. I'm still building my. I know you gotta you gotta build up your LA foodery list. Mm-hmm. What is it? I'm no, looking eatery. for a really good uh, lobster roll spot in California. Oh, I don't know about. I feel like you gotta go to like Manhattan Beach or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like, in California, yeah, Redondo, somewhere okay, over there by the water. Not on the East Coast, period. No, actually, they might have a good lobster roll. Like if you go to like the pier in Redondo Beach, they be having yeah. like uh, where somewhere you can like pick, yeah, can somewhere pick up your lobster and tell them to cook it. Okay. Yeah, like that. Okay. Heard you. I went to a really nice beach this weekend. Es- uh, Escondido Beach. It's up like by Malibu. It's okay. good. That like Venice, Santa Monica shit. I can't. I can't. That's like tourist. It's always crowded. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I can't. I need somewhere in the cut. And you're not yeah. supposed to get in the water over there. You know that, right? Over where? Venice, Santa Monica, oh, no, Weiler. No, 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 no. Okay, just checking. The, water. the only time I've gotten in the water was like somewhere by Laguna Beach and like in San Diego. Bougie. Anyway, back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Joking. I'll be there. I don't too. Yeah, I'll be there. Not ah. care. Anyways, oh, back to the music. Yeah, back to any the music. hidden talents out? Well, not really back in the music because I'm asking you about some other shit. But <laughs> any <laughs> hidden talents outside of music? I don't know if it's hidden, but I like to cook. Okay, and so would what? Isley say that you cook well? Um, you <laughs> <laughs> no, long pause. Yes, Wait, she honest. said, she, what'd she say? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, well, so she's really picky. Okay. Like really picky. Mm. Um, but when I do cook, she likes it. Okay. That means you can What's cook. What's your favorite thing to make? Um, oh, um, you know, I got a whole bunch of new recipe books, so I've been just trying stuff, but I like anything Italian. Um, I make a really good chicken Parmesan. Ooh. Um, I made a spicy uh, penne vodka mm. a couple months ago, and it came out really good. Mm. I always like the way the penne is spelled and said, like, penne. Don't sound like pasta, though, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Who's that kids is this? Like, wait, no. Have y'all? Okay, time out real okay. quick. Real quick. Have Amber y'all Amber ever saw? It, but because this is deep right okay, here. Let's this hear. is real deep. <laughs> y'all ever saw that post where it was like, give me... A child's name that's not a name that you think would be cute for a child. I s- Panay. I saw that's it. so cute. Is, there are some insane answers. Yeah, somebody on that. said chlamydia. I s- I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they said, hear me out though. <laughs> it got a nice little ring to it. <laughs> but doesn't no, Panay no. have like a oh Panay? Like her name is Penny, but she French. Panay. 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 You know, no. hey, what's up, P? I, I like look, Sage. That's gonna be my dog. Like sage. sage is a really pretty sage? name. Sage. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty. Sage. Yeah, I had a student whose name was Sage. Yeah, that's terror. beautiful. <laughs> he was a terror, <laughs> not terror. But I have been now. You speaking of a uh, Italian food? I've been craving lasagna like crazy. But every time I go order it, they always cook it with pork. I'm like, why is there chicken beef and oh, pork? Oh yeah, Can you just put the beef or just the chicken. But yeah, no, I family know. makes lasagna, but like they have a layer of um, plantains. Like sweet Ooh, plantains. Plantains. and we call it. I think it's called like patacon, but it's like basically lasagna. But like there's like that's like a Dominican layer lasagna. Oh, I'm intrigued. There's like a layer right. too. I love plantains. Me too. I, I think I'm Jamaican, so I beat the plantain all the time. Ginger beer, me. I'm so I love mad. ginger beer too. I'm, and I'm, so I'm not mad Jamaican though. Uh, little, I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, my people from Inglewood. Did you hear the accent? There's no. Come on, that was not patois. That was patois. I'm so <laughs> mad. <They cut. laughs> Shut up. My Jamaican patois. accent is great. Okay. Oh okay. The Jamaican gosh. men love it. They say I do it perfectly. <laughs> They also want a green card. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm so mad they closed Little Kingston's right there on uh, Slauson. You ever eat there? I haven't. I've driven past there, but I, that I have never eaten the there. That was the best Jamaican food I've had outside of Jamaica. Oh, man. And it's closed now, but yeah, I be thinking I'm Jamaican, so I love me some plantain. Yeah. <sighs> we got way off topic. <laughs> okay, let's get way off topic. Rerouting my Re- thoughts. Rerouting. Okay. <laughs> um, how would you say like the landscape of R&B has changed if it has or hasn't um, like the last since few years. in the last few years or since you began making music. I feel like there's more artists that are like elements of R and B. Like there's artists that are like R and B folk, yeah, or R and B hip hop and they rap experimental R and B. Yeah, like that guy experimental. Created. There's so many more well, branches. Like, I feel like with the nails. Oh, Tizo. Oh, yeah. yeah, Tizo yeah, touchdown. Yeah. Like he can play in that lane. Tizo can do anything. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out so Tizo. I feel like there's a lot more branches 
extended from the R and B tree. Yeah, mm, for sure. You know? How would you say like, or how do you try to adapt your sound to stay relevant, if at all, or do you kind of just like you? stay in your lane and like? I don't know if I like make it a point to like. I don't know if I consciously adapt. I think it's just natural. Mm -hmm. I think because I'm just constantly influenced mm -hmm. by different things. So like, you're not one of the people that's like, oh, I'm only listening to old school in my car. You still no. playing everything. Yeah, I, whatever I'm in the mood for. And I listen to like all kind of stuff. Yeah. So so you put, you put on some country, some rock. Some I'll put on Beach Boys. I'll put on um, Mary J. Blige. I'll put yeah. on, you know. Whatever you feel. Whatever like it is. Yeah. yeah. True musicianship right there. For sure. I do know a lot of people <clears throat> who like, whether they're in the like singing songwriting space or like the production space, who like don't want, don't want their music or their style to be influenced by like what's going on, so they intentionally don't listen to. I think they whatever's lying. new. I think people allegedly. lie when they say that. I don't listen to anything that come, like how do you not? like they just you like never, listen to their own stuff never or like old stuff and try. I mean, not I get to, that, but yeah, I don't think that's a hundred percent true all the time. I feel like it's not possible to not hear anything new because if you. If you watch TV, if you've ever seen an ad, if you get in the car, you're going to hear something new. And whether you know it or not, we're all subconsciously influenced by what we're going through in our environment. But mm. I don't know, maybe, I guess, intentionally, they're not listening to other people's mm. stuff. Who are some new school R&B artists that are like heavy in rotation for you? Oh, um, I mean, Victoria... Um, and I've, All right. I've loved her for so long, Jeez. especially as a writer. And yeah. it's just mm -hmm. really amazing to see that the world is, you know, Catching awake up. now. And, yeah. yeah. Um, Lucky, I've been listening to a lot of Catronata lately. Um, yeah, new Project Fire too. That Catronata project? Yeah. It's so good. Um, my daughter and I listened to, well, it's not, I think it was classified as R&B, but uh, the duo Jungle from the UK. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, soulful, yeah, it's yeah. groovy for sure. Yeah, like yeah, this like alternative, maybe, yeah, R&B, but yeah, mm. I like when that. You, you just said lucky day, it made me think about something that I wanted to tell you last night. Not last night, I was thinking about it last time. I'm like, I gotta tell Alex this. I was watching you sing, um, I don't know what it was on. You were singing Good and Plenty. When you say taste and see, mm -hmm. you know how long I've been saying, Oh, taste Hennessy, oh, taste Hennessy, yeah. Oh, I've been, I've been well, hey, singing the hey, wrong word. Listen, there's room for that too. I'm like, I taste, swear she taste Tennessee. Like, <laughs> right? I'm listening to her singing, right? And the lyrics are like, I don't know what I was watching, but the lyrics are popping up as you're singing it. I'm like, oh, not me been singing the wrong words for years. Well, like, oh. but yeah. Does that happen a lot? Um, tell you, like, oh, I thought you were saying this. No, but that's no. interesting. But just, that could work the too, one, it, right? Because I always it made sense. It fits to me. in with the concept yeah. of the song, so yeah. yeah. I do appreciate. I mean, aside from that little blimp, I do appreciate Whatever. that you're one of the singers that, like, for the most part, what you hear is, are the lyrics. Because mm -hmm. there are some artists that I'm like, "Ooh, baby, I don't know." I gotta I go on Genius.com for this right. one because exactly. this shit is in cursive. I don't know <laughs> what is going on. That's how sister sounds. That is. I mean, listening to it, looking at my cursive phone, like, in italics with a strike through. I don't yeah. know what baby's <laughs> saying, but it goes. But yeah, it's, it's a vibe. Right? It's a like, vibe. I don't always have to hear it clearly, but if I do want to hear the part, I'm like, I gotta go online yeah, go and look, look up up. the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Because that, I do that a lot, though, and I've noticed it. Like, I don't really pay attention to it until I see either a live performance or see the artist perform live, and I'm like, oh, I can clearly hear what they're saying, yeah, but now. on the song, I've been yeah. I hear maybe. it the way I hear it, yeah. and then over and over again. It gets embedded into my mind that that's I the way that they feel. I'd be freestyling. I'd be putting my own runs and stuff on songs too, because you would swear I'm like, who'd you just say? Faith Evans. When I'd be in the car, mm. yeah, be hitting it. <laughs> Future goals, professionally, personally, what's coming up? Um, <laughs> um, the result of of what I've been working on creatively and fruits of your labor, some things, yeah, here and there. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you ain't got to tell us nothing. I'm asking <laughs> you. I'm, I'm, like, I'm just trying to talk in different code. ways, right? <laughs> uh, I do have some festivals coming up I'm really excited about. Okay. Um, I'm doing the Afram Festival in Baltimore um, this weekend. And then I'm doing the Recipe Festival in London with Jasmine Ooh. and Dustin, Sir, um, Ombre. Oh, actually, I just saw that. 
I think I saw an ad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the pond, I definitely applied for the media pass. The I'm trying to see. Trying to see what they talking about. I heard the internet bruvs is where it's at. <laughs> Girl, please. <laughs> That's what I heard. The internet bruvs? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Bruv. They gonna yeah. feed you <laughs> Bush's baked beans on Wonder White bread. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. Take me. They have really heavy, like, Caribbean influences over there. Yeah, Take they do. The Take me to your house. No, no, no. And no, no, no. make your mama cook for me. No. That's Take what me. I want. Take me to the Caribbean spot. Take me to the West no. African spot. You know backyard. what I'm saying? They got really good Indian food out there, too. Really? Indian food yes. Wow. See, I'm not really well traveled when it comes down to Europe. I've only ever been in the airport. But I just know what I see from. In which airport? Like, Heathrow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I hear they don't play in Heathrow. They don't. They don't. They do not. Don't bring I had to transfer all your stuff into a small little ziplock. Yeah, I um when I was traveling to Paris, the, my original flight had a uh, layover in Heathrow, and my friends were like, "No, because you're change gonna have to, to change else. it to somewhere." Yeah, it else. takes forever. I almost missed um, my flight going to. It was to gonna be Ghana. a tight turnover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. always is. Okay. Well, before we end, we got some. Uh, <laughs> We got some weird we love questions. London, though. We love we love the UK. We got some. Yeah, I love y'all. If you want me to come out there, spend some tunes, bruv. Get me on a uh, Love Island. No, 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 I don't want to go love on Love Island, Island UK. Uh, girl, I don't want to be on Love Island UK. Hey, that shit. That, I'm locked in. You wait. First of all, before I'm you get on Love in. Island, I'll put you on Ready to Love with Uncle Tommy. What the hell is Ready to Love? On it's on OWN. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be on Love Island anyway. They got. How do y'all feel about dating? People. Would y'all go on a dating show for real? The right one. Not a chance. You said not a chance. What about the uh, You wouldn't go on the pop the balloon no, show. No, <laughs> oh Lord, no. Let me. Twenty B one. Twenty B one. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're so sweet. Not but, a uh, chance. But, <laughs> no, that's no. just so disrespectful to me. Like y'all are about to sit here and line up. Crazy. You think I'm gonna get in line? That's Crazy. nuts. I could never. And hold up. Crazy. Girl, stand up. But I anyway. feel like I feel like if they did like a celebrity edition of Love Is Blind, I could see you. I could see Love you. Is Blind. Yeah. I was blind. I feel like that's one of that's the like, one where you sit. It's like the... in the pod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that no. either. No. I feel like if if I had to choose one of them, it would it would be love. If I had blind. to choose any, I'd be on Flavor of Love. <laughs> what would my nickname be? <laughs> what would your nickname be? T T Lalicious. Yep. That's nice. T T Lalicious. Yeah. Are there like hyphens or is it just one no? Word? Just one word, but Great. the T's are capital, and so are the L's. T.T. Lawlicious, one word. Mm. Anyway, we said that we were going to have you on our show, so the fans have some questions for me. <laughs> we'll have you in here all day talking about nothing. 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 <laughs> okay. Just tangent after tangent. Um, but yeah, shout out to the UK. Shout out to Love Island. No, shout out to the UK. Shout out Netflix. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout out OWN. Ready to love. Ow, ow, ow. Um, anywho. Um, BB here. the Neo Soul, she's actually a phenomenal singer too. We had her in here for Singing in the Shower. She mm-hmm. did her damn thing. Um, she wants to know, um, she said, can you ask if being from a legendary musical family has made it easier or harder for you in your artistry? Hmm. I think easy in some ways where I, I know what to expect in certain situations, watching you know them go through things. Mm-hmm. But... Um, you know, I am like any other artist having to work, do the right. work and let my work speak for itself and, and to prove myself in certain situations. Um, so I think maybe in some instances it might have been harder because of and like it's natural for people to assume certain things because of the family that I come from. Right. But I've, I've had to work. Right. So just proving myself, it's like any other artist. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Because just because LeBron James son can. Is LeBron James' son? Don't mean he ain't, ain't got to do suicides. Yeah, you still gotta you know like the last I didn't know name. Where you and, were going with that for a second? I had to listen, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you right. The 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 last name and and what comes along with that that might get someone's attention. But right. What are you gonna do to keep it? Right. And so that's that's my whole thing. It's worth sing down. Use them perfect answer. pitches. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> How do you, now we got somebody else with no profile picture? But I'm gonna say your question. J Biz Best. That's a great name. What inspired the lyrics from her? Shut up. <laughs> Come on. Why even that's, why, question, that's why people bro. think I'll be talking shit about them. I'm not. Read I love question. your name, Jay. Jay Biz Best. This is a great question. Thank you so much. Okay. Love. <laughs> what inspired the lyrics from um, FDA? Mm. Quote, we were so sure of our future. 
The present makes me cry. See, I'm about to cry. What did I just say Come about these present? Finish the question, yo. <laughs> so I use I use the past as a lullaby. Mm. What space was Alex in when she wrote that? Oh, yeah, thanks. I was down bad. Mm. Um, yeah, down. just getting over somebody and mm. was just in the thick of that yeah. emotionally and was like, <laughs> like I didn't know what to do but to just write about it. Shit. Does that help you? Yeah. Is it, it's a release for you? It is, But absolutely. when you hear the song that you wrote about a situation or somebody, does it take you back in that space and do you still feel that same way or can you listen to a song that you wrote about a moment that you're over now and still feel good? I can listen to FDA and maybe still feel a twinge of something, mm. but um, I just am in a different space that was feels like light years ago. Right. Yeah. But I can still connect emotionally to what I was feeling for yeah. sure. I feel that. that. I always think about that too as like a, uh, just as a human being, like when you're going through something, like you don't really want to revisit the stuff that brings you pain, but mm -hmm. artists do it all the time. Mm. And some of the biggest songs I know that people have are like some of their most crucial and emotional and vulnerable moments. And it's like, how do you keep reliving that over and over and over again? I feel like because we've turned it into something that so many other people can relate to. You see, Yeah. That? yeah. And something that we're, we can now. find the beauty in mm. the pain of something. Mm. I love it. I made this playlist one time. The cover of it is like, I don't want, it's, the cover of it is like a picture of like writing or whatever. And it says, I don't want to be strangers again or something like that. And that, oh, the way I was so down bad when I made that playlist. No, I don't be strangers and I couldn't, anymore. like when I finished it, I couldn't listen to it for a little bit. But like now I can listen to it and be like, damn, that man had me <laughs> fucked up. But like, look at where I am. Like, I feel like I always level up from breakups. Like I use a breakup as Isn't like everybody? a- everybody? Well, he should. Like- as a catapult? Mm-hmm, catapult. And the catapult from that one was crazy. And now I, like, I've been re-listening to the playlist. And I'm like, damn, like, that did that. And this is why I love did R&B music. It gets you where you need to be. For sure. The I feel like one of your songs on is there. definitely on there, too, but continue. What? Which one? I'm going to tell them, pull it up, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, it's, a, it's a few, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, that could be on there. But anyway, we had one more question. But I mean, you kind of already answered it. Mm -hmm. It was from uh, Nathan Dot Mensa. Shout out to you. Thank you for your question. How did you meet Jack Dine, and what told you he was perfect for the projects they did together? But we kind of already answered it. She said it was God's timing. Yeah, it was just the natural synergy that we had. Um, just the, the the chemistry we developed from that first session, mm -hmm. and we just wanted to continue to make as much together as as possible. And yeah. It's fire. Thank you. It's amazing. Any advice for up and coming artists, R and B artists in the game, independent artists in the game? Ooh, um, just be sure of yourself. Be sure that you really, really love this, and that's for anything. But right. um, especially for uh, this industry, just be sure that you really, really love it and keep that first. Because mm. there will be challenges. There will be, you know, roadblocks and things. Um, but just stay true to yourself. And just keep working at it. And, and I'm a witness to the time and effort that you put in it. It absolutely pays off. Right. Truly you are. I feel like as a teacher, I was always asked, like, what is your why for, because I feel like that's another lane where like you have to under, like you have to love what you do. And like you said, keep that first. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is your why as for like why you make music, why you stay in this industry and do all the things that you do? The love for it, and this is what I'm meant to do. This is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. But I like, I love this so much more than anything. Like, there's nothing else I would rather be doing. I love to create. I love to perform and connect with people. It's just, it's my first love, and I, there's nothing else above it. I love that. We don't need to ask anything else. Hopefully, That's a great way to Hopefully, it. baby Isley a, picks up hopefully. the baton from both of y'all. <laughs> and that run. little girl's gonna, she has so many influences coming from everywhere. Like, I'm I'm proud of her, like, I know her. Those videos with oh, her daddy of, of her, like, in the background, like, out singing him and stuff. So cute. Uh, so stinking cute. It's, it's crazy. She's a genius. Yeah. So stinking cute. <laughs> Musically genius. All the, all the influences around her is, is crazy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just interested to see how she's going to be when she grows up. And yeah. I'm happy for you. Proud of you like I know you. Um, thank you for what you're doing in R&B. 
Thank, thank you. you for pushing the brand. Thank you for being true to yourself. Facts. And uh, thank you for being here with us today. We appreciate Facts. you more thank than you know. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Beautiful. So once again, Beautiful. people, this is Alex Isley. Make sure y'all go listen we to the music. We got a, it's some new music coming out. She, she told us it was some new music coming out. So I'm a holder to that. But yeah, y'all go listen to the entire past catalog so you can get caught up. If you don't know, now you know. My and name is Tierra Monique. Keep your eyes out. For that singing in the shower episode, because baby sang down. I'm not going to hold you. The pitch was perfect in, okay? <laughs> Love it. Down. Down, okay? That goddamn cover. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him too much. Let him be okay. surprised. Okay. Let him be surprised. I'm Jovi E. Of and my course. name is Tierra Monique. And uh, this is the wonderful, the one and only, the beautiful Alex Isley. Multi talented. Thank, thank you. Singer, thank you. songwriter, producer, mommy extraordinaire. Thank you so much. Superwoman. I've been beyond late.